All right, so we're getting going here. So welcome to the Hot Topics um, lectures. As uh, those of you who have been coming to all these know, this is um, uh, a tradition in Vermont, Vermont Law School to have these summer uh, visits with uh, visiting scholars and faculty that, that uh, grace us with their presence, a chance to have an intellectual discourse about um, interesting, important issues of the day. And I am particularly honored to, oh, I've been, just in terms of logistics, over by Bill Wave, there is a sign-in sheet for anyone who wants um, uh, CLE credits. And of course, feel free to eat your lunch. Um, all right, so logistics aside, it is my distinct pleasure and honor today um, to introduce you to uh, Professor Tian, uh, Qin Tian Bo, Bao. Oh, I apologize. Um, I, first, I first met uh, uh, Professor Qin when I visited Wuhan now six years ago. And I can tell you that uh, I was treated with great respect and a very, very warm welcome. And I fear that we have only, only partially uh, reciprocated and returned the favor. But uh, it was a really tremendous experience to interact with Wuhan University, which, for those of you who don't know, has an environmental law program that is one of the leading programs in China. It's in, in really in the world. They are a center and bring together scholars from all over the world to think and write and work on issues of environmental law. And we have, um, at Vermont Law School and through our US Asia partnership, had many opportunities to engage with uh, Dr. Chin and with his colleagues there. And so it's, it's really for that reason a particular pleasure to introduce him. Um, so you should know that uh, Professor Chin has uh, is widely respected in China. He's, he's a, a, he has worked and consulted with the Chinese government, with the Ministry of Environmental Protection, um, with the uh, Agricultural Ministry of Agriculture, the, the province of Hubei province, um, and has been involved in drafting of many important legal documents um, at the level of government. He's also quite well respected and well known in the international community. He's um, part of the IUCN World Commission on Environmental Law. He's worked on uh, many other uh, programs and conferences um, on international law, including relating to climate change. He also has traveled broadly, and I won't go through and list all of the places where he has, has taught um, and or visited, but they include every corner of this planet. Um, <laughs> so with that, I, I won't go any further, um, but uh, to, so I don't want to take any time away from his presentation. But uh, the presentation is Development of Chinese Environmental Law, Progress, Problems, and Prospect. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Qin. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you hear me? OK, yeah, sorry for my voice. And uh, it is uh, my great honor and uh, privilege to be here. Uh, actually, again, uh, I was uh, uh, in Vermont uh, six years ago, uh, in, also in the summertime. And, uh, over the same days, uh, in 2011, when I was a visiting scholar in DC, and I paid a three uh, days uh, visit here, and uh, got a very, uh, uh, <coughs> very uh, warm uh, welcome by the uh, China Partnership on uh, Environmental Law. And uh, this time is, uh, is uh, my second time to be here, and uh, it's uh, uh, very, uh, very excited for me. And, uh, uh, I will be pleased to, to share my understanding about the China's environmental law uh, today with uh, all of you. And before I, I go to my, my presentation, I would like to uh, use five, about five minutes to introduce my city and my university. Uh, so here is the, uh, the, the, the map of China, and the, here is Wuhan. You can see it's in the central part of China along the Yangtze River, and it follows uh, has almost the same distance to Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong. And uh, hey, this is the map of Wuhan. I'm sorry, did not find the English version here. Yeah. You can find uh, the Wuhan, the city is uh, called as um, a city with, uh, with uh, hundreds of lakes. So um, this is the Yangtze River. And uh, here is the Wuhan University. You can see, here is the Wuhan University. This is a uh, a medicine uh, school here. Here's the main uh, campus. Uh, this is the Eastern Lake, one of the largest uh, uh, lake uh, within a city. Yeah. Oh, that's the university. 
Uh, it was established in 1893, one of the oldest, uh, one of the top 10 universities in China. Uh, and we have a very beautiful uh, campus and uh, uh, ho hopefully uh, similar with yours here in, in Vermont. Yeah. You can see this is in the springtime, uh, in the summer, uh, in the winter. Yeah. Uh, very beautiful. Yeah. That's the reason I stay in Wuhan. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, no, to eat other universities. Yeah. Uh, the institute, as mentioned by, by David just now, and was um, uh, founded in June uh, 1981, 36 years ago. It's very interesting that uh, uh, one we have the uh, had the uh, Environmental Law Institute. Uh, at that time, most of the Chinese have no idea at all about environment, about environmental protection. So this was uh, a great achievement by one of the uh, uh, other uh, 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 oldest uh, Jewish professor Han Depe, who is the who was the founder of the uh, uh, <coughs> institute, who studied the law in uh, in Canada in the 1930s, uh, got his master's degree and then the PhD uh, degree in Harvard in 90, beginning of the 1940s. So he has the, he has the the the, the inside the fourth. Uh, uh, reaching far reaching um, uh, insights on the environmental law. Now we have a very uh, internationalized uh, uh, faculty, uh, 12 members, and plus one uh, library and one uh, administrative uh, staff. Uh, now is uh, the, the real is a kind of a single time for, for China's parliament, uh, MEP, and the Supreme Court, and the uh, local branches. And uh, we started the, our master program. Uh, uh, since 1986, and um, my PhD uh, program since 1977. Uh, both are, are the very first one in China. Uh, the institute uh, uh, hosts uh, uh, two uh, 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 journals. The, this is the new one called as the Chinese Journal of Environmental Law. Uh, we, I'm the, one of the co-editor-in-chief, another is Professor Ben Bo. Yeah. Uh, the the, 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 this journal is a uh, kind of open access uh, 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 journal, so you can use the uh, access uh, token to, to, to get the uh, uh, full uh, text of the uh, uh, articles. Uh, we, we, can, uh, we are also welcome the uh, submissions of the uh, distinguished professors and uh, students here. Yeah. Uh, second journal is uh, called as a uh, climate law. It's, um, uh, a journal on climate change and, and the law. The editor in chief is uh, Alexander Zaha, uh, who's uh, a new uh, full time uh, uh, professor from the Rio. Yeah. And uh, the last uh, information about the Rio is that we provide a new uh, program on the environmental law. It's an all English uh, environmental law program, and the, the university and the Chinese government provided the scholarship to attract the foreigners, especially. The students from developed countries, from the United States, from the European countries, from Australia, New Zealand, uh, to study in, in, in Wuhan, uh, to study environmental law. Yeah. So that's all the information about the, uh, the Wuhan, Wuhan University and the Rio. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a long I think, a contact with the uh, Wabong Law School. Actually, as uh, um, in uh, I think in, uh, about ten years ago, and uh, uh, the <coughs> professor uh, Zhe Ming Yang, has, uh, who was the director of the China Partnership on Environmental <laughs> Law, has been to Wuhan. And we also have the EMA over there. Uh, and uh, you can see from this uh, picture, not so clear, but uh, I'll show you here. This, uh, this guy, you know, is uh, Mark <laughs> Mason. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. And here is EMA, you know. <laughs> well, this is uh, the RUCN uh, TTT program, I think. the. Uh, and uh, Chisi Bach has been the, one of the uh, trainers for the coming uh, uh, sessions. Uh, we, we, we organized the very first uh, TDT program, teaching, uh, uh, teaching the teachers of environmental law. Uh, so the, the Mark was the, one of the uh, trainers at that time, six years ago, uh, I think it's uh, in, in uh, January. And uh, almost the same time, the David Muir came to Wuhan to attend uh, 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 workshop. Unfortunately, I cannot find the picture, so <laughs> you are still there. Uh, uh, that's the second picture. Uh, you can find many uh, female uh, faces here. That's uh, uh, Miss Strong and uh, uh, Miss Ling and uh, uh, 
supposed to be uh, uh, two misleading signs. Okay. Last one. Yeah. Let's check, right? Yeah. He has been to Wuhan twice and gave a wonderful lecture to our students and our uh, staff members and the students loved him very much, loved his uh, presentation very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's of uh, uh, context and the visit of Amon Law School and it's, uh, uh, again, I'm very uh, honored to be here and to share my understanding with uh, uh, China's environmental law with all of you. Uh, uh, my presentation today will uh, include uh, uh, six uh, um, parts, uh, including uh, 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 besides the uh, background and prospect, I will talk more about the four aspects of legislation, enforcement, uh, judiciary, and uh, um, public participation. Uh, before that, I will uh, give you the uh, basic information about China uh, because we have a uh, different uh, system uh, with, uh, with uh, the United States. Uh, we have also a similar structure with uh, the legislative branch, executive branch, and uh, judicial, uh, judicial branch also. Uh, the uh, National People's Congress is our parliament. Uh, we have the uh, president and the premier and the cabinet uh, as the uh, executive branch. Uh, we also have the judicial branch, we call it uh, the Supreme Court uh, at the national level. Uh, at the provincial and the city and the township level, we have a similar uh, organizations. Uh, but we have another very important player in China's uh, uh, daily life, and that's uh, communist party, the ruling party, especially it's uh, uh, Central Committee and the Political uh, uh, Bureau. And uh, the maybe in, uh, two, Three, or three, three months later, we will have the 19th uh, 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 National con uh, Congress of the, the, the Communist Party. Uh, this is very important to, uh, to China's uh, uh, future, not only in law, but also in many other aspects. Yeah. Uh, so this is the institutional arrangement in China. You can see that the, um, on the State Council, we have the Ministry of uh, environmental protection and also several other ministries such as the Ministry for Water, for Agriculture, uh, for, for land resources, uh, so on. And all these are under the uh, 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 supervision of the uh, NPC, the National People's Congress. So we have a similar structure at the uh, provincial level, municipal level, and the uh, county and uh, 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 township level. Uh, when we talk about the development of environmental law in China, especially in recent years, recent five or 10 years, <coughs> we should understand uh, uh, two terms. Number one is the ecological uh, civilization. Uh, this is a, a very a interesting uh, concept and the philosophy um, proposed by the, the, the CPC, the Chinese uh, <coughs> Communist Party of China. Uh, it calls that uh, this, uh, it's very interesting that uh, you know, as before, the, the, we, we, we usually to, to label the, the Communist Party as red, uh, kind of a red revolutionary uh, party. But uh, nowadays, if you uh, examine the, the uh, chapter, uh, the, the, the chart of the, the, the party, you could find it's more like a Green Party than a revolutionary party. So the ecological, uh, ecological civilization is a kind of a guiding philosophy of the party to to guide the uh, development, not only from the uh, economic, but also from the political aspects uh, to promote the, the development of the country. Uh, uh, generally, we could say it's kind of a green development uh, 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 strategy. So the, for, for this purpose, for, uh, to implement this concept, uh, China uh, uh, issued many um, political documents and also the uh, legal documents. So that's the, uh, the, uh, the key uh, um, policies on um, pollution. Uh, I, will, I will not go through uh, one by one. Uh, so on the uh, uh, soil, on the uh, uh, hazardous waste, uh, on other aspects also. This is about the uh, key uh, policies on the ecological uh, environment, uh, such as the, uh, the EIA, the health, uh, environmental health issues, and also the uh, uh, the ecological red lines or something like that. Right? The, the, the ecological red lines means the kind of a, a bottom line that you cannot uh, destroy. Uh, you cannot cross the red line, otherwise it will be punishment. 
I got the policy done. Yeah. Uh, the second is uh, the term is you are very familiar with the rule of law. Um, you know, China is a country with a, 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 we we start to have a, have a rule of law uh, construction about uh, forty uh, almost forty years ago. Yeah, so it's uh, compared to the United States, we are quite young in, in rule of law, but. Uh, after the 40s uh, development of China, I think is in, on the, on the uh, uh, right track, and it's, uh, uh, it's uh, very good. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, development and very uh, fruitful uh, 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 results till now. So, it's, uh, in 2000, uh, for, we, we, for the ruling party, it was very in 1997. The ruling party uh, raised the concept of rule of law uh, in its uh, national policy. Uh, for the first time in 1997, about 20 years ago. But in last year, the, uh, uh, not, not last year, sorry, uh, three years ago, the, uh, the fourth plenary session of the 18th CDC uh, uh, Committee issued a policy on the protect the eco uh, uh, environment with a strict legal system. And uh, so this is uh, the two are very important the background of why is the uh, uh, equalization uh, 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 ecological um, uh, civilization and another is the rule of law. So the, the both um, provided a very uh, solid foundation for the development of the environmental law in China. Uh, another uh, aspect is not so good is about the uh, environmental violation. Uh, we have uh, plenty of laws at hand right now, but uh, unfortunately we have many uh, uh, environmental violations. So you can see many uh, the the the. Uh, uh, cases uh, on the uh, civil cases, administrative cases, and then the uh, even the criminal uh, uh, cases, uh, which are uh, uh, in the context of the uh, development. So to 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 try to control the uh, environmental uh, uh, violations, and uh, China uh, China uh, 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 made pro uh, great progress uh, from my pers uh, perspective that. Uh, uh, in legislation, enforcement, and also the uh, judiciary. Uh, so the first is, uh, let's, let us see the uh, environmental legislation. You can see that uh, <coughs> this is a kind of a system. We have the uh, uh, constitution at the top, and then we have the basic environmental law. Then we have uh, specific laws uh, also. And then we have the, uh, the uh, hierarchy, so the constitutional law, basic law, law, uh, and the uh, regulations. Uh, from the uh, cabinet and the uh, uh, decrease, ministerial decrease and the local laws. Now we also have the international conventions uh, part of the uh, legal system. Uh, we also have some national and uh, provincial uh, the uh, environmental uh, standards. Uh, so it's uh, in 2014 we revised the uh, environmental protection law, which was uh, enacted uh, in 1979 at the uh, very beginning. That, that's, uh, that, that law was uh, only uh, uh, enforced for a trial, actually. Uh, then the, we have the formal uh, environmental protection law in 1989, so, uh, so 26 uh, years ago, uh, or 27 years ago. Uh, two years ago, the new law, new environmental protection law was uh, 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 effective, uh, uh, which was uh, regarded as uh, the most uh, stringent environmental law in history. So it has uh, no matter uh, the, the I mean the length, the article, the number of the articles, and the uh, tools and the mechanisms, it makes uh, great progress. Uh, uh, actually, we, we call this a new, pro, uh, uh, it's a revised uh, uh, environmental protection law. Actually, it's more or less like a uh, uh, totally new uh, environmental law uh, compared to the to the old one. So here are some, uh, some very good uh, uh, signs for, for example, to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to, to uh, integrate the concept of uh, ecological civilization and sustainable development into the law, and also to uh, set out the protect the environment as a basic national policy, and to uh, set the protection as the priority when compared to the uh, economic development. We also introduced many other uh, uh, very uh, successful uh, experience for other countries, for example, the 
PPP uh, uh, principles and the, the public participation, something like that. Yeah. So the, the, the new environmental law is, uh, was regarded as a new step to better protect the China natural assets and the well-being of the future generation. Uh, in addition to the, um, uh, the, the uh, basic environmental law, uh, we have some specific laws in different um, sectors. For example, on the pollution laws and the ecological protection laws. Uh, for example, we have the uh, new uh, revised uh, the air pollution law. We have the, just uh, last month, we revised the, the uh, water pollution law. And the new, I mean, uh, soil contamination law is on the, on the drafting. It's, uh, the first real draft is uh, uh, calling for the public uh, uh, comments to uh, Thursday. Uh, besides the laws, we have uh, so many, the, the China uh, index, many new uh, regulations uh, on the uh, chemicals, on the uh, 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 emissions, uh, on the carbon uh, 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 emissions and uh, uh, other uh, uh, fields also. Uh, another important development uh, for China's environmental law is that uh, the, uh, last year, China's uh, a new uh, legislative law empowered uh, the uh, uh, prefecture uh, cities, uh, prefecture level cities uh, to uh, enact its own uh, local laws, so, uh, especially in the uh, environmental protection area. So that's us. So we have the national laws, we have the local laws, very, uh, very uh, comprehensive system. Uh, although China is a, a politically, China is a single uh, system country. Uh, we know that the, the U.S. is a federal uh, system country, but uh, right now. Uh, in environmental legislation, China is more like a, a federal uh, a, a country. We have a national laws, but we also have the local laws. Uh, although we have a many program progress in this way, but we still have some problems as, as to the legislations. Uh, we can see we, in, in short term we have uh, plenty of laws right now, but the, the, the coordinations among the different laws are a bigger problem. Uh, maybe the one, one law required like this, uh, and uh, another law required another uh, 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 aspects. So the, the two different aspects to, uh, uh, may be uh, conflict with each other. So secondly, so the, uh, the, the stipulations sometimes are very vague, it's not so clear and not so operational and practical. It's difficult for the, for the uh, uh, APBs. Uh, environmental protection bureaus to, to enforce it. Yeah. And uh, the third problem is the, uh, the responsibility that's still not so strong, actually. Yeah. Although we have uh, increased, uh, strengthened the, the, uh, the responsibility, but uh, uh, if we see the, the, the regulations and the uh, uh, articles, if we find that uh, uh, some responsibilities are uh, like a target without teeth, you know, uh, second one is the, the, uh, about the uh, environmental enforcement. Uh, according, according to the new uh, basic environmental law in 2015, we have some new tools. For example, the daily continuous uh, punishment. Uh, we think this, uh, this one is uh, uh, based on the model from the United States. Uh, we also have to have the uh, COF or uh, distribution uh, limited uh, production uh, information public uh, disclosure and transfer of the uh, administrative uh, uh, detention, something like that, but new uh, tools to, to, to help the uh, EPB to enforce the law. Uh, we also have uh, some new, I mean, for example, establish the environmental police. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the MEP and the uh, local uh, uh, EPBs uh, was equipped with more, I mean, uh, resources and uh, staffings. So they have a, uh, then uh, the, uh, the enforcement uh, uh, is more independent than before because the, uh, the, the, in some way that the, uh, the, 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 the head of the EPB is part of the, uh, the local cabinet 
and sometimes it has to uh, follow the, the instruction of the, the mayor. But nowadays, that uh, if the mayor does not follow the environmental law, the mayor will have some trouble. So that would be uh, better for the enforcement. And we have a very good uh, law enforcement uh, coordination because you know environmental law enforcement is not so not not a, a job of the the uh, EPB itself. It needs the coordination from many other uh, uh, ministries and uh, departments. Uh, so that's a, in that aspect that we also make some progress. So if uh, we, we look at the uh, general situation, in the, the first uh, half year, we have some uh, uh, the, the, uh, the whole country nationwide and the different levels of the uh, EPB uh, have many uh, uh, enforce, uh, enforcement uh, cases. Uh, the, the problems in the environmental enforcement uh, is that the first is the uh, overlapping regulatory uh, powers. Uh, for example, we, sometimes the conflicts between the EPB and with the uh, the water, the, the Department of Water, Department of Land Resources. So how to coordinate the, the, the regulatory powers, that's a problem. Uh, second is the um, uh, still a poor uh, supervision mechanism. Uh, the third one is the uh, low uh, public uh, confidence in law enforcement agencies, uh, because this, uh, uh, this, this is not only the uh, in the environmental area, but also in many other areas. So the uh, the, the 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 public have a very low uh, confidence in, in in law enforcement. This is a, uh, a long uh, uh, history in China actually. So the third, uh, the third aspect is about the development of environmental, is the environmental judiciary. Uh, we have a very uh, um, bright development. It's called as a specialized environmental judiciary. That's called as a green in the, uh, the court. Uh, we have a green, a green environmental court, uh, something like that. Uh, something like that. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, issued a very uh, 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 specific uh, in interpretation on the uh, spe uh, specialization of the environmental uh, judiciary. Uh, the, according to the Supreme Court, the, the uh, specialization included four aspects. One is the, uh, uh, the concepts, the ideas. Uh, second is the, 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 the systems and mechanisms. Third is the, uh, the uh, specific uh, hearing and the judging rules. And the last one is the uh, professional teams. Because it's, uh, we have uh, more and more environmental cases, but uh, we don't have many, uh, I mean, professional judges uh, who has uh, the, the expertise or has the qualification to hear in the, the, the cases. That's the problem. So, so that's the four uh, different uh, uh, aspects on the uh, specialization. So in June uh, uh, 2014, the Super uh, People's Court uh, established an uh, environmental chamber. So before that, uh, in 2007, we have the very first environmental court in uh, Qingzhen city, uh, Gui, uh, Guizhou province. Actually, uh, we, we have to thank the uh, Wamu Law School, especially uh, uh, Ms. Ye Mei Li, because she, she, she worked, at that time, worked for IBA, I think. Uh, she uh, brought the, the idea of the environmental court into China and uh, have a uh, 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 project with the Wuhan Law School and Wuhan University Research Institute of Environmental Law and to, to try to promote the uh, environmental court in China uh, in some way. Now, so to the uh, end of April uh, this year, we have uh, almost a thousand uh, kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, environmental courts uh, at different levels in China. Uh, I mean, the specialized court uh, uh, in, in China. Uh. So uh, when we look at the uh, litigation, the cases, we, uh, just uh, the, the, the figures of the last year from the July 2016 to June uh, 2017, uh, we go found that we have about uh, 16,000 criminal cases and uh, 187,000 civil cases in one year and uh, uh, 39 administrative cases. Oh, in China, we have a different uh, system, maybe. We have a 
civil cases. We have uh, administrative cases. Civil cases are only against the uh, violators. And uh, the, uh, the administrative cases against the uh, uh, EP EPBs or other uh, government organizations. Um, we, we have the uh, similar system to your citizen suit, uh, which is also sent to the, the, the model of the uh, US. We call it uh, uh, public interest litigation. Uh, according to the Article 55 of the, new, uh, of the Civil Procedure Law and Article 58 of the uh, Environmental Protection Law, the two laws are uh, 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 entitled the NGOs and other uh, uh, qualified uh, organizations to bring the lawsuit against uh, uh, the uh, violators or the uh, uh, governmental organizations uh, in the name of the public interest. So just uh, last, last month, the China revised uh, its uh, civil procedure law and administrative uh, procedure law and uh, uh, officially uh, entitled the China's uh, uh, procur uh, uh, procuratorial organs as one of the pl plaintiffs uh, uh, to bring the uh, uh, public interest litigations. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, development. Uh, as to the, uh, the, the problems that uh, the environmental judiciary, we, uh, I think for me, I think the first is the, the development are very unbalanced in terms of uh, areas and the plaintiffs. Uh, if, uh, the, in some areas, we have uh, many cases, but in some provinces, we have uh, only one or two cases. But uh, in, 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 in most of the areas, you could see that the plaintiffs, are the NGOs, are, are, are a few NGOs, just two or three NGOs, and they, they are local, uh, I mean, prosecutors. And uh, we have more uh, civil cases, but less administrative cases especially in the public interest litigation, I mean, uh, raised by the uh, NGOs. And another interesting situation is that almost all the public interest litigation, I mean, the plenty for one, finally. It's good, but it's not so good, right? So it's uh, averagely, uh, you, you could win, uh, you could lose, right? But in China, almost 100% <laughs> wins. So that's the problem that, uh, uh, many people are, are rethinking uh, the, the, what's the reason and what's the, the solution for that. And another side, uh, how to uh, uh, balance and uh, coordinate the private and the public interest uh, during the, uh, the, the litigation because uh, uh, most people uh, prefer, not right now, uh, they prefer to, to uh, public interest litigation. But according to our legal system and the legal ground, uh, the private actually they have the the qualification to bring the 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 private litigation against the violators. So that when when the when there is a public interest litigation, then the the court normally will not accept the private uh, 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 interest litigation again. So that's the problem. How to coordinate that in, in future? Uh, last aspect about the uh, development of environmental law is the uh, public uh, participation. Uh, this is also very important for, for the development of environmental law, not only environmental, but for the rule of law also. Uh, the the uh, new uh, uh, environmental protection law uh, defines the basic principle of public participation. And uh, it has a special uh, uh, chapter on, on this uh, law called as uh, uh, information disclosure and public participation. Uh, it is the very first uh, law in China who has a specific uh, chapter on public participation. Uh, then China has also issued uh, several uh, uh, regulations and uh, uh, ministerial decrees on the uh, public participation in environmental protection. Uh, so you can see that now we have the uh, different uh, stakeholders in environmental uh, rule of law. Uh, we have the NPC, we have the state of uh, uh, state owned enterprises, uh, the local uh, NPC, we have the state council. So this is the legislative uh, branch, this is uh, the uh, executive branch. Uh, this is the general public, this is NGOs, media, this is the, uh, uh, the foreign, uh, 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 I mean, the, the, the foreign companies. 
uh, in China, uh, the joint ventures or something like that. So this is uh, uh, the uh, pictures of the the uh, uh, stakeholders in China right now. So the 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 public here, this uh, the when we talk about public, include at least the NGOs, media, and the uh, people. So their roles in in China, is, is especially uh, 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 vital because the traditionally China's uh, environmental um, regulation is kind of a top-down approach. Uh, so we we rely on, uh, uh, very heavily on the governmental um, powers. But nowadays we realize that the importance of the um, uh, uh, bottom-up approach. So how to encourage it and uh, to facilitate the participate of the general public is a huge uh, challenge for future. Now we have uh, many ways to, to participate in the environmental uh, matters. Number one is legislation, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, almost all uh, environmental laws, regulations, uh, are, are open for public comments right now. Uh, secondly, we can also join in some uh, 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 specific uh, enforcement events uh, or activities. Uh, certainly, yes, this we, uh, when we talk, uh, we, we, uh, the NGO can be the uh, uh, plaintiff of the uh, uh, public interest litigation uh, uh, in judiciary, and the general public who have the opportunity to, 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 to uh, uh, hear, the, to participate in the process of the uh, judiciary. Uh, the, the problem for the uh, public uh, participation right now is that uh, number one is the uh, uh, we have the general regulations on public participation, but uh, in some way we don't have very uh, practical and operational uh, regulations uh, for the for the general public to participate in the matters. Uh, second is that the uh, the one the the right was uh, if or if it were, 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 uh, rejected, and the safeguard are not so so strong. I don't know, and uh, this still also as mentioned that uh, the general public and the uh, the authorities have some uh, misunderstanding with China. So that's the 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 uh, for example from one side and from the, the the perspective of the authorities, uh, sometimes they regard the participant of the general public as a kind of a trouble. They don't think it's uh, to help them to, 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 to make a, a good and a legal uh, decision. They say, so just uh, uh, stop my, <laughs> uh, my, my, my decision making, stop my, my, my work or something like that. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the four aspects, as I mentioned, the development of China's environmental law. And uh, uh, for the future, I think it's, um, uh, for me, I'm a, a little bit optimistic. Um, so it's, uh, China's environmental is on the right way. Uh, the legal system of the environment has been, I mean, uh, gradually improved. And uh, uh, the, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, we, we are still uh, drafting many new regulations and uh, uh, military uh, uh, decrees to operate uh, the, the uh, basic environmental law. And the local environmental legislation will achieve a greater development uh, to, to have uh, detailed uh, rules uh, for the local level. And the environmental enforce, uh, uh, enforcement face uh, new challenges uh, because it's, uh, the, uh, especially in the context of the uh, uh, economic uh, uh, decrease, actually. So now the many, in many uh, cities right now in China, the, uh, the unemployment rate is very high. And uh, how to coordinate the, uh, uh, the many people, including some officials, think that one of the reasons is that the the strength uh, environmental enforcement. Yeah. So that's the how to coordinate the uh, the uh, make the balance between the economic development <laughs> and uh, environmental protection. That's a huge challenge uh, uh, for for future. Yeah. Uh, so is the uh, the. The value of the environmental judiciary will become increasingly um, uh, prominent. Uh, obviously, the environmental uh, 
the uh, judiciary, especially the specialization of the uh, 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 judiciary played and will, will play an uh, increasing role in, in protecting the environmental uh, 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 system. But the, the challenge will be that how to uh, coordinate the different tools, including the legislation and the uh, uh, enforcement and the judicial and other tools of governance yeah, to, to uh, 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 optimize the, the value of the uh, environmental judiciary is also a, a problem for, for our uh, system. Uh, the last is about the uh, public participation. Uh, the, of course, I think according to the, because of the uh, 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 reason of, uh, uh, rising of the uh, 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 environmental awareness and the environmental, I mean, I mean the, uh, also the uh, living standard, uh, more and more people realize the importance of uh, the environment. So they, uh, uh, they have the strong uh, awareness uh, to participate in uh, environmental matters, especially from the, uh, the coastal areas when they have a, uh, the, a high uh, salary and high income and uh, uh, good, I mean, or even better living standard, they need the uh, better environment, uh, natural environment for them. So that's the, the general picture, very quick, very brief uh, introduction to the, to the uh, development of environmental law uh, in China. And uh, if you have uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to, to let me know. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> questions, reactions? No, please. Uh, so this is kind of a very maybe specific question, um, but in your discussion about environmental public interest litigation, you mentioned administrative cases. Um, and I'm very interested in this, doing a little research on it, but they, as I understand, the 2015 amendments authorized civil NGOs to bring civil cases, but not administrative cases. And the administrative litigation law was recently amended to allow procuratorates to bring administrative evil cases, but not NGOs. Um, so I was curious if you had any, if that came up in your research at all, or, and why NGOs were not given the ability to bring administrative cases. Okay, yeah, this is a very, also a very controversial in, in China. So according to the uh, Article 58 of the Environmental Protection Law, um, the, the NGO uh, is entitled to bring the uh, administrative case also. This is from the uh, theory, um, uh, 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 theoretical uh, analysis. Uh, so the, the law did not, uh, that does not um, prohibit the NGO to bring the law, uh, the, the administrative case. But in practice, uh, because of the reason of the uh, court, because also the, because of the, the, the reason of the NGOs, they prefer to to bring the lawsuit, uh, 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 bring the, the civil uh, cases against the violators. Uh, from the from my understanding that the the the, the Chinese uh, government is still very uh, not so I mean confident uh, in, in the rule of NGOs. So he's uh, so that's the reason that he. Uh, it uh, uh, proposed uh, the, the uh, prosecutors to bring the, uh, um, the, the administrative cases to against the uh, uh, administrative uh, uh, organs. But there are some, uh, actually many uh, legal issues. Uh, for example, the, what's the rule of the uh, uh, prosecutors? Uh, especially in the second stance. Uh, and uh, there are many, uh, I mean, dispute uh, 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 or arguments <laughs> in, in this regard. Uh, for me, I think uh, it's, uh, it, it is acceptable uh, for the prosecutors, uh, according to the new revised uh, civil and uh, administrative procedure laws, 
to, to entitle formally the uh, prosecutors to bring the lawsuit. But it's still, for me, it's still uh, open a room uh, for the NGOs to bring the lawsuit against the, uh, the, the, the uh, administrative organs. So it's not the best solution, but it's uh, maybe the second best solution. Uh, yeah, that's you know in China, it's, uh, the uh, the uh, public interest litigation is a very new and interesting has a very interesting development history. I, I personally, I, I I think it is very necessary for China to have a such uh, system, but I do not think the the public interest litigation can solve all kinds of problems right now, especially the legal problems. But, but right now, they, uh, for me, uh, maybe my colleagues uh, have a different uh, opinion with me. Most of the people in China now regard the public interest litigation as a kind of uh, one size for all solution. And even, so this, uh, it's kind of it's very interesting that the, the, according to the uh, ecological uh, civilization strategy, uh, the, the, the Chinese government need some development, need some uh, achievements in judiciary area. The court need some uh, achievements. The NGO need some achievements. So the 100% the, the uh, uh, win uh, situation is a kind of win-win-win uh, situation. But it's not normal. It's not, not, not a, a reasonable for me. And uh, it uh, just get some, I mean, the, uh, it's, it's give me it's a, a fake uh, prosperity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it did not solve many uh, situations, uh, many problems. That's the reason I mentioned that uh, the private interest litigation is also very important in China. Look, I'm a lawyer. Uh, for me, uh, almost uh, five, uh, Two or three years ago, most of the you know, public interest litigation cases in China, I mean, they, in some way, or lack of the legal grounds. They don't have the, uh, I mean, the, the sufficient and uh, <laughs> reasonable uh, legal article to support them. It's kind of a, in Chinese word, it's kind of a political achievement. Uh, it's uh, not a, a political performance. No. So now uh, the the when I talk about the one hundred percent of the uh, win rate uh, situation, it's mainly refer uh, to the I mean uh, the pilot area the the, risk, the the litigation raised by the uh, prosecutors. So that's that's the kind of uh, I mean uh, top down I mean approach and the. The local uh, prosecutor, uh, pro prosecutor are required to bring the lawsuit against uh, the, the, the administrative organs. And before they, they, they brought the, 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 the cases, they have a long negotiation with the, the defendant. <laughs> so this is not, not a normal situation, you know. So that's, that's I think, it's, uh, we, we, we still have some, uh, some uh, uh, challenges in the future because, uh, uh, for example, as I mentioned, uh, uh, if the defendant uh, appeal to the second stance, so what's the rule of the uh, uh, the prosecutors? Right now, they use the 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 model of uh, criminal uh, uh, cases. So they are the uh, the the public uh, prosecutors, uh, uh, and the the uh, uh, representative of the state. But for the uh, civil cases, for the administrative cases, they use the they use the same model. But this is unfair to the defendant. 
So we, have, we still have plenty of, uh, of, uh, of uh, questions and issues right now for us. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I know we've got to let folks go so they can get to the next class, but that was really a tremendous presentation. Very, very fascinating. And I can say that in the last six years since I, I last was visiting China, there's been such incredible progress. And I know there's still a long way to go, but thank you for all of your great work and for your presentation today. Thank you so much. Thank you.